Vail Fuji here, your go-to gear gap for all things photography. So let's go through the ways that we're going to connect our camera over to Spot My Photos so that stuff can go and get up into the cloud and get out to our attendees. Here's how we do it. Most of the time I shoot on a Canon R6. There are two different ways we can get the images from our camera out into the Spot My Photos server that's out in the cloud. So the two different ways are either by using one of the little different USB connection ports that you have here on the side of your camera. It's exactly the same as you normally probably would do when you're doing tethered capture. The other way is using one of their proprietary Spot My Photos Wi-Fi cards. So with the Wi-Fi card with it there, I don't need to use a tethered capture element with it there. You are going to have to be hoping that you are in a building that is going to have not tons and tons of different Wi-Fi interference. That can sometimes play havoc with the reception of this going from there to your phone to get the images there. So it's always good to have a backup. So I'm going to first show you how to do the tethered capture and then we'll move into how we go about doing the settings for using the Wi-Fi card. So when I do tethered capture, I like to use a little piece that helps me have the phone be right there along the side of it there. So this is something you can purchase from Spot My Photos directly. So it's just a plate that's going to screw on the bottom here. Screw, 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 screw. Okay. Many times during the event, I'll actually kind of have to tighten this up. It does to get a little bit loose there, just to be aware. And then it has the spot for me to put my phone on there. So when I use this, it's not deep enough for me to have the case on the outside of my phone. So I do go ahead and just take that part off. I'm able to leave the inner portion on just fine. Then I just loosen up the clamps on the side here, pop the phone in, just like so. Close that and tighten the nut on the back here. And so that's in nice and tight now. Great. So now you can see as I'm shooting, this can stay right here. I don't have to worry about having the cord tethered to my wrist or anything along those lines. First, I'm going to go into my settings. I'm not showing you guys my passcode. Settings. Display and brightness. Go to auto lock. Make sure it's on never. And when you're done, Make sure you switch it back over or else you're going to go, why on earth is my battery draining so much and why is my phone never locking? That's why. Next, go into Spot My Photos. And I'm going into the app on the phone. So I'm going to pick that out there. Right now, we're going to be connecting with the tethered solution. So I'm going to go right here into that and then click on Canon for my camera and I'm picking Corded. All right. Right now it's saying there's no cord there, which it's right. So here are the pieces that you need to connect your camera from camera to your phone. Unfortunately, just using the USB-C to the iPhone cable will not work that comes along with your iPhone. You have to get a separate camera connector piece from Apple that is their proprietary one right here. And it'll have the little actual camera symbol right on the bottom there. So what I end up doing is we use a cable, in this case it's a USB-C to USB-C that is from my favorite brand Tether Tools. It's the most reliable, best connection, and they actually have made ones that are exactly the length that you need for doing Tether connection for Spot My Photos. So I use that in addition because it's going to, from USB-C to USB-C to good old fashioned USB-A, I need to go and change that. In that same little pack, if you get it from Spot My Photos, the connection kit, it comes with this piece as well. That's the adapter. So I'm going to connect that in here. Oop. That's on. Connect into the camera piece there. Okay, now that I have all those pieces there, I'm going to connect directly to my camera. And then I'm going to connect right up into the bottom of my phone. I can see right now it first gave me the little computer sign like it was just starting to tether. I can click on the little link symbol here. Usually, there we go. <laughs> Took a second and it will show me camera connected. You'll notice if it's off of there, it goes to an X like that. It's not going to connect. But if I go and I have this connected on here, 
takes a little second. You can see it's going to register on the camera there. And at times you'll sit there and go, this is interminable. Is it ever going to work? But eventually it connects over. If you're having trouble with it and it's not, I suggest turning off your camera, restarting the app, go log back into the event and go through the selection and make sure that you connect the camera first and then go and put in the white cord to the bottom of your Apple iPhone. If you're doing it with just a thing of an Android phone, you're likely to be able to go straight here and right into the bottom without having that secondary piece. Okay, so now I'm connected. Let's see how that's working. Are we in real time getting our images to come through? All right, I'm in a lovely room right here. Let me get my camera person here in front of me. A shot there. And in that time, bam, right there. It has taken it a fraction of a second and it's already uploaded right into the cloud of Spot My Photos. Now, if I want to do the spotting her right then and there, what I would end up doing is just tapping there, tapping on her face, and then entering in either her phone number, her email, or if they're international, I can do an international phone number with WhatsApp there. So that's all there is to it uh, with it there. We're connected, it's great. If for some reason you're in a location where you're having trouble with the online and it being actually beamed up, you can go into your settings and choose offline mode. And when I choose that, it's going to wait. It'll give me a note here and it says, enabling offline mode will cause all photos and attendee spots to queue for future upload. This is useful when operating with limited or no available internet connection. It does. It's a smart way to go with it. If you want the most solid, reliable transfer of your images to your phone, to the Spot My Photos app up into the cloud, the tethered solution is the way to go. But let's go through it and see how we do the Wi-Fi card. When I'm using the Wi-Fi card, I like to use the branded Spot My Photos wristband to be able to have my phone right there at my leisure on my wrist. It makes it particularly easy to go and spot people and enter in their phone numbers when it's right there. Plus it just grabs attention and people think it looks cool. If you're doing the Wi-Fi connection way, you have to be able to use your data plan to be able to upload the images up to Spot My Photos. So it takes a little bit of setting things up of having your camera on the Wi-Fi of the card that is on the actual uh, piece that you have from Spot My Photos going into your phone. So one of the things is, is that when you first get this little card, it's going to have in it there a card that comes with it that will tell you what the Wi-Fi password is for this card. Do not lose that. You will want that so that you can connect to the Wi-Fi network that this card is going to generate once it is in your camera. Okay, I have already done that before, so I don't have to put in that password, but that is an important part not to forget. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this into my camera here. You can choose to have it be recording on one of the other card slots there to shoot RAW and the other one if you so desire, and then only be shooting JPEGs onto that. You don't want to be shooting both RAW and JPEG to the Wi-Fi card because it's only a 16 gigabyte card. So you'll probably run out of memory very quickly if you did that. So to do that on here in there, I would go into my menu. I'm going to record separately. All right, so I'm going to menu here. And now I can choose independently what goes on what card with it there. I have right now in, I believe, let's see, I can see right here slot one, slot two. So slot one is my Wi-Fi card, slot two is the one behind it. So I'm going to set it, set it and forget it, is I'm going to set for card one to be a small JPEG. Depending on how fast your network speed is there, you may want to choose to do a, the all the way down to S2 or have it be S1 rounded, S with the little squares and that. S2 is going to be the absolute smallest file size. So if you're having very limited internet connection speeds, do the smallest file size possible. I in general kind of stick with the S1, the little steps of it. 
and I hit OK. And then I'm going to keep on the second card there, I'm going to do, because if it's events and stuff like that, I'm going to do compressed raw for it. OK. I'm going to pop my phone right onto my wristband. To do that, all I need to do is just get the little corners up into here of the elastics. Very simple. All right. Pop it on my wrist and adjust the size. Okay, now I can see that easily. Now to pair them up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on here. I'm going to go to Wi Fi. And I'm going to find amongst the networks the one that says Spot My Photos on there. That's from the Wi Fi card that you just put in there. It's sending out a signal. And I'm just going to select that. Okay, now I'm connected to that network. If there are other networks that you had used previously, you may want to disable those because it may automatically switch over to those networks in that location. You want it to stay connected distinctly with that Spot My Photos Wi-Fi card. Now I'm going to go into my Spot My Photos app. I'm going to end my session from before. I'm selecting my event. And now, picking up first one, Spot My Photos Wi-Fi SD card. Click more of that. It's connected. Wonderful. All right, let's see how this goes. I'm going to take another shot of my wonderful assistant here. Great. Let's see how quickly that goes through. Bam. There it is, and it's uploading. You can see how it went quicker when we used the Tether as opposed to using the Wi-Fi card. You'll find that there's even more lag time the further this gets away from your camera. You may even lose your actual connection with it there. So generally, you want to be keeping it right in close with it. You might have the tendency to be like, oh, I'll put it in my pocket. That might work. It all depends. If you're going, my connection keeps going in and out and having problems, that's the first thing to do is make sure if you're doing the Wi-Fi one to make sure it's staying nice and close to your camera. And that's it. You got the same thing as before. You can go in, spotter, and that's it. That's how you connect it. The last connection method is using the auto uploader using a computer. So in that case, what you're going to end up doing is using a tether cord. I use this type of method when I'm doing headshots at a conference. Another time you might use this is say you're taking pictures just in the same location over and over again at a step and repeat. Uh, anything along those lines. Now tethered into my camera over to the computer. I'm going to pick a folder where this is going to be going on here of all my images. In this case it's going to on belay today. Then I'm going to go to the Spot My Photos program. Bring that up. From there, just going to log into my account. Don't mind if I just turn it so you don't see. I log in. And now I'm going to get choose an event. Pick the one on delay in this case. And then I'm going to select my hot folder. It's exactly where the images would be going to when I'm tethered. You could be using this with Capture One, wherever they're going, Lightroom. Or in this case, I tend to use DPP4. It's Canon's actual specific software that they have for tethering because I find it's just super rock solid. And now, any images that are JPEGs that are in that file folder are going to be uploaded automatically right into the Spot My Photos system. You can see it's already boom, starting to do this as we go along. As I take those shots, boom, it'll end up just going, popping into there, and then it'll just get added right into the queue. And it just goes along like that. And that's all there is to it. Very simple. One very important thing is you want to make sure that this uploader stays on top of the other windows. You can make it much smaller so that you can see the other stuff that you're doing. But if it gets caught behind one of the programs, sometimes the uploading process will get really slow and delayed. If that happens, where your best bet is to do is to just click on End Session. Yes, I want to end it. Go in and make a new folder of a hot folder and then change where your images are going to to that new hot folder and set it so that it goes once again from the start as a clean spot. If it did other parts that were in the queue that hadn't uploaded yet, what you can just do is take those images from your actual desktop computer and just drag it over in the web browser to the uploader that is right within the back end of Spot My Photos instead of you using the uploader to do it. And that's a way to just kind of 
catch up with things so that people can still get those images instantaneously. If attendees at an event are coming through so quickly that you don't have time to individually spot people, one thing you can do is have printed up your very own QR code. This is something you can find right from the back end of Spot My Photos. In there, it will give you a specific QR code as well as a link that can, you can give to people to self-spot. What that means is all you have to do, have something like this printed up. You can go and just have them use their phone, boom, just like this. Grab that QR code, which eventually my phone will see. There we go. And we click on that. It will take you right to a site that will then say, skip the scrolling, let us spot you. Receive your own private photo gallery. Step one of two, submit a photo of yourself or upload from the gallery. I usually recommend people just do it by taking a selfie right then and there. So we'll take a photo. It automatically puts it into selfie mode there. Grab the shot. And then use photo. They can just pop right in their phone number right there, WhatsApp or email. So I'll do that myself here. Add my number in and I'll hit agree to the terms of service. Yes, spot my photos. And then, boom, comes right on up. Take us a second. And all set, now the fun begins. You'll receive an alert with a private gallery link as soon as you are spotted in event photos. So that's all it takes for people to self-spot. I really recommend when you're at events, have a few of these different QR codes around in different places so that people can very easily self-spot, be it on the top of high tables, at a conference uh, there in a booth, you can even have it on a very large poster, at a wedding, things like that. It makes it very simple for people to then self-spot instead of you having to be limited to only doing the individual spotting of people right there on the phone.